Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC19 in Denver, Colorado, and today I'm here with Dr. Englim Go from HPE. Dr. Go, thanks for having me once again. Rich, good it's good to see you. To see you. Again since yeah, Dallas, was it? yeah, Dallas. We had we've had these uh, fireside chats for years now. Yeah. But today I wanted to ask you about HPC and AI. It seems like they're converging. Can you tell me some examples that might show how this works? Yes, yes. Uh, there are many levels of that integration. I think uh, one of the earliest kinds that we've seen applied in operation is one where on the HPC modeling simulation world, where you're doing, for example, fluid dynamic simulation, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times you, you run your simulation and then eventually you realize that that's the wrong way to go after quite a lot of time and sometimes all the way to completion, right? Then you come back, change your initial parameters and run your simulation again. So we've seen uh, an example uh, where a customer of ours took all the old failures scenarios and all the successful uh, scenarios and trained a neural network as mm -hmm. to what looks like a successful outcome as the computation is progressing and what looks like a not successful one. And then now use the AI system to tell when to stop the simulation early because it is likely not going to be successful. So this is one great example, I believe, in increasing the productivity of modern simulation on the HPC side using that. Yeah, because that's an expensive resource to run this supercomputer for hours if it was going on the wrong track. Huh? Imagine uh, 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 operations where they are restricted in the amount of modeling simulation time, like Formula One uh, mm -hmm. racing cars. We yeah. have a, a great example there where there is a limited budget for modeling simulation. Mm -hmm. So they have to be very careful about what, what they do there. And a lot of unsuccessful runs uh, is costly to them. Okay. So they are applying this AI system to tell them how to stop simulation early mm -hmm. so that they can do more successful ones okay. within the budget. Yeah. That's a great example. Uh, I wanted to ask you about things like healthcare and AI mm -hmm. because it seems to me that it's heavily regulated with information. How can you create a model based on this private information without exposing that uh, to, the, to the world? You get bias. Yes, right? yes. So you, for, let's use a hospital since uh, we're talking about health data. Mm -hmm. You get a hospital. Uh, seeing lots of cases of uh, uh, lots of different cases, say of, of chest uh, chest condition, mm -hmm. having lots of chest X-rays, yeah, yeah. but seldom see uh, one particular kind. Say, for example, a pneumonia, pneumonia thorax uh, uh, condition, uh, but sees many other conditions of chest X-rays. Right? Okay. If they train a neural network that way, that hospital will be biased against pneumonia thorax because it's not seen many of those cases. In order for it to improve, it has to collect data from other hospitals that sees lots of those conditions and train with them. But then there is a problem, yeah. right? Privacy, uh, you know, not just privacy because of HIPAA, but also privacy across uh, uh, country sovereignty, right? Lots of privacy requirements. So that's part of the reason why we figured a way. How do you share your learnings across hospitals without sharing data? Mm -hmm. That was the reason why uh, we developed a technique called swarm learning. And basically what it does is every hospital does their own learning of their own data, mm -hmm. bias, never mind, right? And another hospital does their own learning, bias a different way. But after each cycle of learning, we use the system to collect all their learnings, the weights of the neural network, average them and send it back down. Then they continue learning. Okay. Collect your weights, average them. After a few epochs, eventually all the hospitals, uh, we've done a test of three hospitals, uh, data, and uh, all three, the bias is removed here. Yeah. Oh, all three could detect all three conditions that they didn't have individually. We ended up allowing sharing of the learnings mm -hmm. without sharing of data. data. Well, that's, that's, that's really compelling. Wow, great stuff. Well, hey, I wish we had more time to talk, but uh, thanks again for having me and look forward to next time. Great. Great to meet you, Rich. See always. you again. Yeah. You bet. Uh, insightful questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> See you later. Thank you.